Hi everyone and welcome to the book refuge and welcome to book haul number 31. Wow, in two and a half years I've done 31 book hauls, which is crazy, but also awesome because I love new books. So let us go into this the way I usually break things down, which is to kind of go by, I'm going to start with some new releases that have come out within the last month, I think, uh, about there. And then we'll go into the self-pub books that I purchased, historical romance books I purchased, and then just whatever. Um, as is new for my channel here, I am now an Amazon affiliate. So if you want to buy any of these books that I list, um, you can go ahead and check out my description box below. And I have a list to my Amazon storefront where you can pick the book and whatever format that you want it in. Um, and I get a little commission from that. So, you know, girls gotta hustle, girls gotta do what you gotta do. Um, but let's dive into these because, oh my Christmas. I'm excited by a lot of these books. So let's start with the new releases here. So the first one, um, I'm not going to talk too in depth about a lot of these. Hopefully we'll see. I say that and it doesn't always happen. Um, but I picked up Forged in Fire and Stars by Andrea Rob Robertson. I just thought this book was so beautiful. It's totally a cover buy. And then I picked it up and I know, and I saw that it had to do with like blacksmithing which I think is fascinating. I don't think that I've ever read about a blacksmith hero before. Um, I think there is one in the Grishaverse who is like, kind of, sort of, does something like that. But this is about a girl named Ara, who her father was the last lore smith, um, which is a blacksmith who serves alongside the kings and queens of the area. And she doesn't think there's really any purpose for her trade anymore and then she gets roped into um this princess and prince they like steal her away to help them out so i just thought it was cool i think it's really beautiful um i really bought it for like the detailed like i love the detailed axes and things it's the same reason in my last haul i told you that i bought um house of dragons is because of all the swords on the top which i thought were gorgeous then I know this is new this year. I don't know the exact day it came out, but this is called Night Spinner by Addie Thorley. And I picked this up because I heard that it was kind of like a, yeah, it's kind of like the Hunchback of Notre Dame, um, but gender swapped. Like, I think it's a girl who has the deformity and I could be making that up, but who knows? This is also by the same author who did An Affair of Poisons, which I still haven't read yet, but I thought this was beautiful, and I've also never read a retelling of The Hunchback of Notre Dame before, and I thought that was cool. So I picked up this one. Um, this one is called Nowhere on Earth by Nick Lake, and this book is about Emily, who ends up getting lost, and she stows away on a charter plane and it crashes and so she gets stuck with this guy named Aiden and so they're going to try to make their way home together and I absolutely love stories where like a couple gets lost in the wilderness it reminds me of starry eyes and um I will save your life or something I can't remember not if I save you first um I really like those kind of stories so this one seemed like it'll be a fun summer read for me, even though it's very like set and wintry. I like to read those kind of like lost in um, nature in the summertime. So then this book I've already read and reviewed and I didn't like that much and that's Ballad of Songbirds and Snakes. And so this is in this haul video, but it just as quickly is going to be get on hold after I maybe let my sister read it if she wants to and a couple of my friends I don't need to keep it. It didn't do anything for me. If you wonder about the tea, go watch the review I have for it. I just picked up Incendiary by Zoreda Cordova. And number one, gorgeous cover. Number two, I, I've had this on my list to buy for a while. And then when I really like was reading the, um, I was reading the details. The main character's name is Renata. And uh, one of my wonderful aunts, who she's passed now, um, her name was Renata. And I've only ever seen 
two other characters in books named Renata. Um, it's not spelled the same way as hers, but um, there is a member of the Volturi in Twilight whose name is Renata, um, who has a special gift, and then there was in another fantasy book that I've read that name, but I already wanted to get it, and then when I saw the name of the heroine was Renata, I was like, mm, I gotta have it. So this one, I don't even totally know what it's about. I think, so it says Renata was only a child when she was kidnapped by the king's justice and brought to the luxurious palace of Andalusia. As a memory thief, the rarest and most feared of magical Moria, Renata was used by the crown to carry out the king's wrath, a siege that resulted in the deaths of thousands of her own people. Um, and so now she's actually a part of a spy group to like get revenge for that. So I really like that. It, it reminds me a little bit of the vibe of it reminds me a little bit of um, Graceling, where there's this woman who, the power that she has, the king makes her use it for his gain. Um, and so I really like that idea. But I'm really excited to see this. And I love that the main character's name um, is that. Um, so it's really beautiful anyway. And then this book just came out today, and I kind of want to stop everything and read it and... I need to finish Hero of Ages first. I need to finish Brandon Sanderson before I start another fantasy. <clears throat> but it is The Shadow Wand by Laurie Forrest. This is the third book in the Black Witch Chronicles. And I've been waiting for this book to come out for almost two years. Because this one took her a long time to write. Um, I actually got approved for an arc of this. But the formatting sucked. And I also only got approved for it ten days ago. And that, that's just not a quick enough turnaround time for like a fantasy book. Because I have to like hype myself up for it. Even though I was so excited to read it, I love the Black Witch. Uh, well, I don't. The Black Witch is kind of a bitch, but I love the Black Witch Chronicles. But the formatting in my ebook was killing me. So since this already like was just about to come out, I was like, I'm gonna just have to wait for it to come out, and then I'll make sure that I give it a really detailed review once I get to it. But I love this. If you want to know a little more about the series, I just put it in. Um, my favorite fantasy romance video that I made if you want more details on it but the detailing is so beautiful and I'm so excited to read it I'm so excited to read it it's beautiful let us transition over to historical romance and I'll talk about a couple of those that just came out and then we'll go over the historical romances I've recently purchased so I read The Virgin and the Rogue this book just came out recently by Sophie Jordan it's the newest book in the Rogue Files um, I really really enjoyed it I had never read a Sophie Jordan before but I heard about this book talked on this book talked about on Faded Mates and it sounded really cool. It's actually an aphrodisiac story. So our heroine gets really bad cramps and her sister is an apothecary and so she makes her this potion that's supposed to help with her cramps but it actually turns her into a stark raving horn dog and she kind of attacks this guy in the hall and humps him in the hall and he doesn't do anything ungentlemanly besides maybe not stopping her. He's not exactly in a hurry to stop her, but he never crosses a line. Um, but then he has a hard time believing her when she says that she only did this because she was drugged. And so he goes about trying to woo her and she is already kind of promised to somebody else. And she's like, no, 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 I was drugged. I don't really want to, blah, blah, blah. And, you know, romance ensues, but it's adorable. Another new release, um was Say Yes to the Duke by Eloise James. I've already read this one as well. Both of these books I talked about in uh, my weekly wrap up. If you want to know more about them, um, I will put that video up there. Um, but this one is the fifth book in the Wilds of Window, Window Castle. This is about this girl who suffers really horribly from anxiety and she wants to marry a vicar so she can live a quiet and peaceful life um, and she ends up catching the eye of a duke. And he really wants her to say yes. So there you go. It's really fun. So the rest of the historical romances I bought. So I ended up buying the rest of the series by Sophie Jordan. So I already owned While the Duke Was Sleeping, which is the first one in the series. But like I said, I still read this one first. And then I bought the rest of the books. So I have so far read The Duke Buys a Bride. And I haven't read... The rest of them but it's so good the while the duke was sleeping 
um, which I, again, I talk about this in my wrap up, but the, the Duke buys a bride is actually about the Duke who is sleeping and doesn't end up with the girl at the end. So that was really fun. I've already read that one. Um, and then the rest of them, they kind of take place in Scotland. Some of the people are Scottish, some of them aren't, but I'm very excited to read the rest of the series because it's been hit or miss so far. And I don't know how I feel about Sophie Jordan's writing style overall, but they're just fun and they're quick. So, you know, then I am filling out my Sarah McLean series. So at one point I will actually finish one of her books. I did start Wicked and the Wallflower and it's not landing with me. Great. So I either might like skip that entry and go along to Brazen and the Beast, which I really want to read about Beast. Um, or I might start with one of her other series because actually these are new. They're not new releases, but I bought them brand new. And that is The Rogue Not Taken and A Scott in the Dark, which are books one and two in the Scandal and Scoundrel series, which I already have the third one. And then I bought Nine Rules to Break While Romancing a Rake, which I know is the first one in her like rules series. Um, and is only like the second book that she wrote. So I really think maybe I should start at the beginning with her. I don't know. What do you, what's your favorite Sarah McLean book? Let me know. Because at this point I own almost all of her books and that's not a bad thing. I do that all the time with historical romance authors. I end up owning their entire series and haven't read any of their books yet. But I want to like Sarah McLean so badly that I think it's messing with my head because I love her podcast. I love her attitude about romance. And so I want to love her so much that I think it's messing with me. So where's your favorite place to start? Look at in the wallflower just isn't doing it for me and I'm sad. So then I have some used historical romances I got when I went home for Memorial Weekend. I, again, here's another author where I'm slowly getting a lot of her books but haven't read any of her yet. And that is um, Laura Lee Gerke. I don't know how to say her name. I picked up How to Lose a Duke in 10 Days. And it's His Every Kiss. These are both there and they fill out the series because I already have Guilty Pleasures by her and a few other of them. So more of her. Haven't read anything by her yet. And then I picked up Lorraine Heath's Western, one of her Western series. So I've read her Hellions of Hamisham series and the first book in the like Bastard series. And I've really liked Lorraine Heath. She really is a heavy hitter in historical romance. Like her books aren't comedies, which I'm not always in the mood for, but sometimes I am. And these one, this is her like Western series. So I'm excited to give these a try. Look at that. These are definitely fit into the bodice ripper category. Um, so I have Never Love a Cowboy. This has a beautiful step back. Look at that beauty. So there's Never Love a Cowboy, The Outline, The Lady, and A Rogue in Texas. So um, I picked these up at my favorite bookstore back home. So I'm excited to read Lorraine Heath. I, there's only one author. Well, I've read one of Johanna, Lin the only Johanna Lindsay book I read as well was a um, Western. But otherwise, the only Western that I have ever read was, what's her name? The book is called In Want of a Wife. I literally can't remember that. So I don't know if that's something that I'll want. I really love Hell on Wheels and like Longmire and like that stuff. So I don't know why I wouldn't, but I definitely want to try these because I really like Lorraine Heath and I trust her. So I feel like she might be a good author to like blend over for me. So there we go. Those are the historical romances. Um, I'll show these real quick. So leading up to, uh, just to get more Katie Robert in my life, I'm really trying to read her backlist. I love her Wicked Villain series. I love um, her like shorts that she's put out and she has this entire series that is a, um, let me put this in order, maybe me feel better, that is a mafia series and if you have been around lately, you know, I've went through, I'm in like a mafia binge right now, I'm reading a Nikki Sloan mafia book, but I, between um, 
between thrift stores, I found one at a thrift store, and thrift book, um, I found the entire O'Malley series. So one of my friends, um, it's Avery from Avery Love Books, she wants to read the series with me, and I've read the first two in this series. I read this like long before I like knew who Katie Robert like was for other stuff. Um, and so I have the whole series here. So that's fun. Then, oh, let's talk about these real quick. I have already read three of these. So I have the Gabriel series, um, Gabriel's Inferno, Gabriel's Rapture, Gabriel's Redemption, and Gabriel's Promise. I've read these three already. I've given them five star um, four star, four star. Um, I really, really loved the first one. It was a slow burn, um, age gap, professor student, um, second chance romance. It's like so many tropes. It also isn't erotic. So even though this looks erotic, this is a contemporary romance with a lot of issues. There's trigger warnings for assault, for alcoholism, for abusive parents. Like there's a lot going on. Um, Again, I talk more about this in my weekly wrap-up, and I'm really into it. The series has started to drag a little bit. I'm hoping this newest entry, which this actually is a new release as well. Um, I just didn't know that. But there's quite there was quite big gaps. Yeah, this just came out this year. There's quite big gaps between this third book and then the newest one. But I really, really suggest this. It, I guess it's on Passion Flicks now, which is how I heard about it, because another romance booktuber was talking about watching it. But they like only put up part one so far, so I'm not even going to try to watch it until they put more out because I know where that cliffhanger's at. I know where it's at, and I'm not going to do it. So this is really good. These are by Sylvain Reynard. I don't know. It's so good. I talk about it more in my wrap up, but reading those. And then I also picked up The Professional by Cressley Cole. This is the first in the Game Maker series, and I actually have the second and third one on um, ebook. I've already read the second one. This is a mafia book. I would call this a good intro to the mafia because it's definitely not, it's the inciting incident, but then it's more about their relationship, which is good. So this girl named Natalie, she was adopted when she was born basically, and she's been trying to find her father and she uses like the adoption agency to try to find her dad. And she has had no contact and for three years she's been trying to find her dad. So she's 21, going to school, and it turns out her father is like the head of one of the Bratva, one line of the Bratva, which is the Russian mafia, which, you know, is usually the worst kind of mafia from what I've read because they, you know, don't mind sex slavery or, you know, killing women and children. That's usually what I've read in other books that I've that I've read, the Brav are the worst. Her dad is a cinnamon roll. He's a clockmaker. He's kind of the leader of this part of the mafia. Like, it's not that he's not brutal. It's just that he rules more with respect, which may or may not be a good thing. And so when some of his enemies find out about his daughter, he sends the professional, Alexander, the Serbian Sebastian, to protect her. And he ends up having to basically kidnap her to bring her to safety because it's hard to explain, hey, I'm part of the mafia and your father needs you protected. So this book was amazing. It was seriously sexy as fuck. This is my first Cressley Cole. I haven't read any of her other series. Um, I also loved The Master. It was amazing. These have uh, BDSM in them. This one pretty heavily does. Um, the Master does as well, especially like different kinds of like kink within BDSM. Um, I've never seen a chastity belt done before. That happens and it's pretty hot. <laughs> also that. So anyway, you probably already know about Cressley Cole, but this was Amaze Balls and I'm excited for more. Okay, let's see. Let's talk about these ones here. So I ended up getting back into Christine Feehan. Mostly I've just read the first one so far, Judgment Road. I heard about a certain kind of sex thing that happened on Faded Mates. And I was like, I love Christine Feehan. 
that sounds like something she would put in her books. Let me look it up. So I ended up getting this. This is an MC series that takes place in Sea Haven. Um, if you've read any of Christine Feehan's books, besides the Carpathian novels, most of them take place in Sea Haven. And this is the start of an MC series, which the thing that, okay, you know how I made a video about like what it is about mafia that makes it work for me? What it is about MC that makes it work for me is found family. That's like, 100%. Besides having the hot alpha male, a lot of different kinds of stories can have a hot alpha male who just like, I own my woman, I love her, you know, like that's a thing. That's great. That's fine. The found family is what does an MC. So in this series we're dealing with, they are, as kids, they were being taught how to be spies, how to be killers, how to use sex to get information. And then they revolted when they were teenagers and they killed the people who were imprisoning them and they didn't have any other family though all their family was killed or gone and so they end up like growing up together and starting a motorcycle club in Sea Haven so I've read the first one this is about Reaper and Anya and it was really good and I'm excited to read the next two they're really dark and heavy there's tons of trigger warnings because it's MC like there usually are so but, God, it's really hard not to just dive headlong back into Christine Feehan. But I am restraining myself. I will not go back down the Carpathian hole. I will not. I will not do it. No. Um, some other new books that I just got today. I got Ruin and Rule by Pepper Winters. Pepper Winters. So I've heard about Pepper. I heard that she's dark and deep and all the things. And I actually have one of her other books... It's the like the contract or like the the debt the debt book. I have the first one on my Kindle and I haven't read it yet. And this I guess is the first in the Pure Corruption MC. It was only three dollars at Barnes and Noble, and I was like, hey, I like MC books. Let's get it. So we're gonna give this one a go. It's an MC. There's nothing else I have to explain. I picked up The Edge of Never by J. R. Redmarski. I have seen this on some other people's channels and I saw it at Barnes and Noble and so I grabbed it. Um, it's about this 20 year old girl who decides to just run away from her life and start a new one. And so she runs into Andrew who lives life like there's no tomorrow and they fall in love with each other. So there's that. And it's a fun contemporary romance, you know, there's nothing. There's nothing tricky or extra that we have to go for for this, you know? Here it is. Here it is. Then I picked up The Royal We by Heather Cox and Jessica Morgan. How great. I'm sure that's a pen name, right? It's got to be a pen name. But I love that that author's name is Heather Cox. Like, come on. That's fabulous. So this is about a girl named Rebecca Porter. And she, her sister is engaged to a prince. Um, her twin sister. And so she, Bex ends up going to Oxford and she finds herself like staying with her sister-in-law's family, I guess. That's how it works, right? Hold on, let me read this. Oh, no, no, no. At Oxford. Okay, cut that out. So this is the royal we, this was actually in the fiction section so I don't know if that means this is more women's fiction or what but it's by Hatchet and it seems to me like it's romance and there's going to be a sequel to it so I'm excited but here we go this is what it says it says American Rebecca Porter was never one for fairy tales her twin sister Lacey has always been the romantic who fantasized about glamour and royalty, fame and fortune, yet it's Bex who seeks adventure at Oxford and finds herself living down the hall from Prince Nicholas, Great Britain's future king. And when Bex can't resist falling for Nick, the person behind the prince, it propels her into a world she did not expect to inhabit, under a spotlight she is not prepared to face. The pressures are almost too much to bear as Bex struggles to reconcile the man she loves with the monarch he's fated to be. Okay, so this is Prince William and Kate, and I'm into it. I'm totally here for it. And it has a sequel coming out soon, and I'm into it. It says that, is this like contemporary romance though? 
cool. And I guess it came out in like 2015. Is the sequel already out? No, it says the sequel is not coming out until this year. Wow, that must have sucked. I'm glad I didn't read it before then. And then, okay, finally, we are to the self-published novels that I bought. These are usually books that I have already read and I want to own a copy of them. I say this every time. I'm really big in supporting self-published authors as much as I can. So if I really love a book, I usually have the ebook version and the hardcover version, or I mean paperback version. Um, however, the first one, this one I um, got off a thrift book and we're actually talking about it tonight, which will have been last week from when you're seeing this. So you'll be able to look up the video if you want. But I already read Insidious by Aletha Romig. This book was picked for me by my friend Steph. And so then we ended up doing a buddy read about it. And this was a total mind fuck. And I don't know how I feel about it. But it was interesting. And I literally can't tell you a thing about it to not ruin it for you. Besides 18 year old forced into a marriage. The marriage is not what you think it is. And so we're being told it from when she's 18 and being forced into the marriage to she's 28 and her husband is dying. And so the husband she was forced to marry is dying. And that's where we're at. And that's all I'm going to say. Okay, that's it. If you want to know more, go look up that live show we did. I purchased copies of more Katie Robert, her self-published books. So I got Worthy Opponent, The Beast, and then Your Dad Will Do because I needed to have, number one, Katie just has beautiful fucking covers of her books, guys. If you haven't already looked up, I'll put a picture of here. These are the next two in the series, The Sea Witch and Queen Takes Rose. I can't wait. I need to order the first two still, but these are my favorite two, so I ordered them in... in uh, physical copies first, but I will order the next one and I'm going to get her entire taboo series because if you haven't looked at a picture of these, they are so gorgeous. Her books are beautiful. Katie, you do such a good job. I love it. So I bought copies of those. I finally got a copy of Wrong by Jana Aston. I've had a copy of Right for so long, but this is Jana Aston's first book she did. This is an age gap romance. This is between a girl and her gynecologist. She's also a virgin and she ends up, she's been obsessed with this guy who's coming to the coffee shop every day for months. And then she goes in for an appointment with a new doctor and she finds out it's her gynecologist. And they're both really disappointed. I mean, they're excited to see each other, but they're disappointed because he thought, she was just a normal, like, didn't realize she was a student, okay, because she's only 22, and he's 37, and her doctor. So it kind of, for a little bit, kills any chance that they have. Um, this one's great, too, because Everly, who is the heroine of Riot, she is this girl's best friend, and it's delicious. Jana Aston writes hilarious books. Like, this is a comedy all the way through, and... It's adorable. Like, it's it's hilarious. It's outrageous. The whole thing is outrageous, but it's adorable. I picked up A Nordic King by Karina Halle. I'm slowly getting um, all the books in the um, Norwegian Royal series because I love it. This one is also an age gap, and it is a, um, a nanny. There's a nanny to this widowed king, um, and oh, it's so good. It's so good. So he's a king, she's a commoner, she's from Australia also, and it's a forbidden romance of royal proportions. That's what the tagline is, and I love this series. It's adorable. Then, this is the one I haven't read by Karina Halle, but it was on, the paper, the physical copy was on sale, so instead of being the full, like, you know, $14 you're going to pay for a paperback, this was only like $8.99, so I was like, oh, well, I'll get it, because I love all of Karina Halley's books, and I haven't read this one. There are a lot of her books I haven't read. I just mean everything I have read I've liked, um, and this is the first book in the Dumont series, which I haven't read any of those, so I picked that up. And then the last one, this was actually a gift from the author. I don't get a lot of those. I mean, I get solicited for reviews. They're usually ebooks, but this one, he offered to send it to me. 
And I'm glad he did because thrillers, I definitely don't read ebooks of thrillers, but this book um, is called When the Sky Goes Dark by Oliver C. Seneca. Now, I don't usually read thrillers, but this book he said is like, it's supernatural, science fiction, horror, apocalyptic, and post-apocalyptic are all the things it fits into. And I thought I would just give it a try. So I'm going to try to get to it soon. Otherwise, it might end up being a fall read just because I have to be in the mood for a thriller. But it's not super long. And here's the, let me read what the prompt is here real quick before my camera dies. Whether it's to finish college or muster up the courage to talk to the cute girl in class, Jonathan Barnes wants nothing more than to make something of himself. To be a man and make it on his own. That is, if he can constantly questioning and racing, if his constantly questioning and racing mind lets him. After a sudden, bloody brawl on campus that leaves over half of Whitehaven College dead, John finds himself thrust into a world turned completely upside down by violence. The news is overwhelmed with reports of rioting across the country. Oh, okay. Plane crashes and countless innocent lives. They say it is going global. Oh, no. Oh, Oliver. This just got real, son. This just got real. Okay. With no explanation as to the cause of the nationwide catastrophes and uh, cryptic phone messages from his parents, John has no choice but to traverse into the horror to find his loved ones. His family may be dead or worse, turned into rage-filled maniacs that pay no mercy to anyone or anything when night falls. Well, this may not be the most appropriate time for a story like this, <laughs> but I definitely will put it on the buy and hopefully when I'm in the mood for the next thriller or a thriller gets picked in my monthly TBR, we'll give this one a go. So there you go. That is all the books I bought in May and the beginning of June. Um, let me know which ones you're excited to. If any of these you're interested in, make sure you check out my Amazon storefront down below and I'll see you next time. Bye.